Hello folks, my name is Scott Grove. Um, I always have to remember that new people are constantly learning guitar um, every single day. Um, my roots lie all the way back with um, the likes of Marty Robbins, Ray Price, uh, the old, old, wonderful styles of um, country music, country and western music. Um, Western is gone from country. Country is almost gone from country. Um, country now here in at this particular time of shooting here in um, August of 2012, country is now what Southern Rock used to be back in the 70s for the most part. Um, you know, of course, uh, everything has changed a lot. Um, but there is still a huge call for me to go right back to the good old roots and right back to the good old beginning. So that's what I'm doing today. One of the simplest lessons I've uh, done um, and this is for all you old time country players whether you are old time or not, you know, in age. And this is to get you to getting your fingers working along with your rhythms. Okay, so this is going to be basic stuff. Yes, you're going to get a better shot than this. But taking just the basic G, C, and D chord and adding little tiny low end lead guitar licks. Okay, so we'll put them in like uh, this. That is what I'm going to go over um, in with this particular lesson. So let's get off my goofy looking mug, get right down here to the guitar. Yeah, I'm down here on the floor so I can get right good and close with everybody. <laughs> okay, I didn't bother to dress up for this one today. Okay, so um, let's just make sure you're in tune with me. I'm just going to play a standard G chord, but remember when you come and see me, a standard G chord is played with one extra note compared to the way most people will show it to you in a book. Okay, most people will teach you to play it with just three fingers. Okay, when you play along with me and you play along with what I feel is a much better sounding chord, um, I play a G chord with four fingers. So instead of having your normal G chord with your um, ring finger up here on the third fret of the low E string, your first finger at the second fret of the A string, and normally you would have either your pinky or your ring finger at the third fret of your high E string. Okay, what I want you to do now is actually always dedicate that ring finger to the third fret of the B string. And I want your pinky on the third fret of the high E string. So you're using four fingers. So you get this G chord that sounds huge and full. Okay, so make sure you're tuned up to me with that. Most everybody has your electronic tuners these days. Okay, I won't sit there and bore you with going through one note at a time tuning like most people will. Just make sure you're in tune with me here with this G chord that we've just learned. And if you've always done it this way, wonderful. If not, please get used to it. Because um, now, listen, after listening to this and going back the old way, and my way, the old way, and my way. Okay, there's times for both of them, um, but as a general rule, this way that I showed you with the four fingers um, just sounds fuller, and it will enable you to do what 
is coming up later in this lesson, and that is to simply, I'll give it give it away now, give it away now. <laughs> a little Red Hot Chili Peppers reference there for you. Um, no, that's not our Mexican restaurant. <laughs> for all of those of you who actually are real old timers. Okay, um, this will enable us to actually take these two fingers here that are on the third and second frets of your E and A string and then just move them both down, just like your fingers are glued together. Move them both down. One string each. I'll get nice and close, I'll scooch in. Okay, move them just down like they're glued together. So now they're on the A and D string. These two fingers stay where they're at. And that will give you what is actually called, I know it's a crazy long name for some of these chords. Um, this is just a um, C suspended second. It's called that because of this D note that is here on the third fret of your B string. Um, that is all theory stuff, which you will learn later. Okay, but for today, it's all about seeing this, seeing and doing and copying. Okay, so that chord would actually be played from the A string on down. So you have the G. Then you take those two fingers down. Here, you've heard this a million times. Okay, so I'll scooch back. <laughs> Why? Because I don't want to hit the zoom on my camera. I'm just that lazy today. Okay, we will be using that. You can even bring it on down to F by moving them down two more fingers. later since we're only going to be using G, C, and D today and not the F. Okay, now um, the strumming patterns that we're going to be using are going to be For those of you who need the practice while we are in G, um, what I will be doing is alternating root notes or bass notes. So you have now on the low E string, then down up, then the D string, down up, E string, D string. Now to C, that's the A string now. Then you're going to take your finger lift it off of there, take it up to the third fret, just right above it on the E string. But as soon as you do that, see this fingernail here on the second finger that's left over? As you see now, my finger just kind of moved and it put the nail against that string. That is to mute the string or to shut it up. You can still hit all six strings and not have that open A note that we just took our finger off of to create that. Okay, because we don't want that open A string to ring. If it did, we would have this. Not good. So a good trick to that is to simply, when you go up there to reach up there, to put that up there to hit the bass note, rub that pinky, I'm not sorry, pinky, <laughs> run that nail, you know, just because it naturally happens because of the reach you're making. Your arches here tend to go up and the back side of your nail will eventually, it'll be a memory or a muscle control actually, not a memory control. It'll become like a muscle reflex in your finger will just automatically know to go there. Before too long you'll quit thinking about it and you'll just go straight to that. So in the C, and when we go to D, it's very simple. We do the D string, then down up, then A string, D string, A string. Okay, 
So that's going to be the way we would actually strum these um, with or without doing the um, little lead parts that we're going to do today. The I'll show you how to do that and a couple variations of it. Um, this is just to get you past playing strictly chords and just sticking some uh, fun in there. Um, melody lines. Okay, And pretty soon you'll be able to sound out your favorite songs and play them. You get used to how these different notes work together within a chord. Okay, and you'll start hearing all kinds of things happening. You'll, yeah, start hearing songs happening, and you'll be able to figure them out for yourself. And hopefully never need a person like me for very long. It's always best for you to learn um, most of this on your own after you get to a certain point. Um, avoid what are called tablature. That's where everything's just written out for you and tells you what fret everything goes. Kind of as I'm teaching you, but if you actually remember the stuff, learn the stuff on your own without reading it somewhere, it will sink in like 20 times faster than if you read it out of a book, whether it be music notation or whether it be the tablature method. Okay? So if you just learn by doing and just sound things out that will stick with you and you'll become a much better guitar player guaranteed about 20 times faster than anybody who cracks a book okay so I'm the first teacher that's going to tell you do not crack a book there are no books in this class they're not allowed okay okay so let's get right to the first little lead line and um, we'll make it the easiest way possible first and then we'll go another round with a slightly different variation just to get you around the fretboard. Okay, so in G, um, we're going to start off with a lick first. A lick is um, something that is um, not a rhythm, but it is something that people familiarize themselves with. Um, something like that is a lick. You know what that song that is right off the bat. Okay, so your first lick or run or whatever you want to call it. there's a million names for what this is or just lead guitar part is okay this is done on the low E string third fret middle finger okay now open A that just means nothing on it no fingers so you have again now we're going to go and we'll call fret numbers off because we're going to do everything else here on the A string. We're going to go to 2, then 3. We're using our first finger, then our second finger. Back to 2. Back to open. And then finally back to your G chord. But you're going to only hit the one note. Okay, so slowly. First, you're going to do your third fret with your middle finger on the low E string. Then everything else on the A string, open. Second fret. Third fret. Second fret. Open. Okay, all these are being picked down. Okay, that's called phrasing. Okay, just like you would talk or sing. Do, 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 do. That's the phrasing we're going to use. We could use the same notes, you know, but it's phrased different. But for now, we're wanting to go. Do, 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 do. Okay, now that last note there. Okay, I'll get back to where we came from. 
that gives you time to get your G chord back ready. Okay, so when you go to open, you're getting ready to add your whole G chord back. And when you do add it back, that gives you that second fret on that A string. Then we do our strumming, and then we'll go do another lick into the next chord. And the same um, going into each chord. Okay, so one more time. Do, 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 do. From the beginning, okay? Two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. Two, get ready to add the chord one. So work on that as much as you need to, pause this video, and work on just getting the one chord. Because as you can tell with the strumming I'm doing, okay now watch, this is Mr. Smooth here, yes I'm doing what I told you earlier, if you remember, low E string, D string. If you look at this, you're going to see that this is where it's going to get really musical. You never have to let up on this chord. Okay. Okay. There's where music starts to happen. Okay? So you can do the... if you want, or you can skip ahead and try to work on both ways. And because you'll have parts where you want to play the single notes like I'm teaching you at first, and there'll be other times where you want everything to sound nice and full while the rhythm guitar is still going you're playing the bass part or the lead line or the licks or the riffs or the what a, what have you okay your uh, strumming can get bigger but it's no different here Okay, so the same notes, just work at it and get it nice and smooth. Then come back for the next part. Okay, this is going to be basically the same type of thing going into each chord. But I will vary each one just a little bit. And then I'll go back and show you a different way to play basically the same thing. Um, and just give you all kinds of good beginner points on how to do this kind of playing. Okay. So now we're going to get from G to the C chord. Okay? So hopefully you have stopped and went back and did this and spent a couple days on it if this is the level you're at. Okay? Um, so we're going to go try to get from the G to the C. We've already done. Now the next one's going to be. Okay? It's exactly the same to get to there, except for the, all we do is change chords to the C chord, okay? So there's nothing new to learn here. Okay, so 
that is all there is. It is the exact same lick. Then C chord. Then, that's right, bring that finger up to the E string, third fret. Do your block right here with your pinky so you don't hit that open A string. So again, and that's all the further you're going to get because then we're going to go then okay so that's what's coming up okay so one more time getting from G to C. So from the beginning of the G where we're going to change to the C. So this is the second time that we are doing the lick. The same lick as the first. Two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. So that's how you get to your C. So the same way, except for instead of hitting that note, you're hitting one more note up, which is your C. And that just goes right to your C chord. Okay, so from the beginning, if you have it, let's try it. We'll go from the very beginning. In two, three, four, one. take some getting used to and if you can um, again try to be fluid which means try to be um, keep the picking going the strumming going while you're doing the lick the very first one of course always sounds nice just by itself now we have this So we'll be able to get through all of them while the strumming continues by the time we're done with this, okay? So let's get from C to D. Now the lick is actually going to be um, different than we've done. In a way. <laughs> um, there's two notes that are kind of changed, but you're just on a different string is basically it. Okay, so we are in C now. So we're actually, the C note is the third fret of the A string. So we're going to do the same lick, but instead of here, um, you're going to just start it down here. Okay, that much of it will be the same. So 
third fret on your A. Now go to your D string, open, second fret, third fret, second fret, and that's where we go back to. We're not going to go open like we usually do, okay? So again, first fret on your A string, D string open, second fret, third fret, second fret. Now we're going to go back to the third fret on the A string where we started. Because if we were going to go back open, okay, we would have to hit that note twice. We're looking for a different note to play because that note that you hit twice is the chord we're going to, or the note we're going to, the D note. Okay, so you would not want to go. We're looking for another note to put in. Okay, so that way we're not hitting any two notes in a row. Okay, so we just substituted a note. All notes that we're playing are fair game in any order. You don't have to stick to what I'm doing. Okay, so I want you to actually practice what I'm doing and practice what I'm not doing. Take the same notes, just put them in different orders and mess around with them. You're going to find all kinds of different things you can do. Okay, these are just the notes that are safe within each chord. Okay, so this is just like coloring. You pick a spot, you just start coloring, but just don't go outside the lines. You have guidelines, that's all these are. Um, you can't color outside those lines, but you can start on the left or the right or the top or the bottom of the page and start coloring. So same thing here. It doesn't have to be that, it can be You know, they're still the same notes, but they're phrased different, and they're just in a different order. Okay? So, music is about um, self-expression, so express yourself after you learn what I teach you. Um, and when you get bored with what I taught you, express yourself there, then come back to this. Okay? So again, getting from C to D. Okay, again, one last time. Third fret on the A string. Open D, second fret, third fret, second fret. Now third fret on the A string. Now that sets us up. The next thing we're going to do is play the D chord. That much of it. So D, down up, A string, down up, D. Okay, that much of it. So D, down up, A string. Down, up, D. That's how much of the D we'll be playing. Once again, on just the rhythm of the D, once we get there. Two, three, four, one. Okay, so um, from the beginning of this, lick from C to D. Okay, practice that a couple times. I'll count it again. Two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. try all three of these together if you're ready. If not, pause it, work on it. Come back and I'm going to count you in. And we're going to do all three pieces together and then there's um, another part to go through to get us back to G and to use what I showed you at the beginning. Um, that too. 
but there's the big lick, which is... That much is still left, so there's a, a big one coming up. Okay, so from the beginning, from the... And all the way up to the D, to what we've done so far, in... Three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. This one, after you get done with your C to D. This one actually is um, easier than it looks because the, both strings are done identically, which is open D string, second fret, fourth fret, so you're going to use whatever finger gets you there, whether it be your ring finger or your pinky. And the same thing on the G string. Okay, so open two, four, or open second, fourth fret on both strings. There's the phrasing. Do, 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 do. phrasing is. Um, only thing left to do is do what I showed you at the beginning. Play that G chord, but you have to do that note first. You're just G string. So you have Okay, so then it gives you time to reach for your G chord. While you're reaching, you get to finally hit the G note, or the open G string. Then strum down, up, C, suspended second by moving those two fingers down like they're glued together. Okay, so. Okay, you've heard that old 50s type type of um, strumming. Whatever you want to do, it's your guitar, okay? It's your music. Um, again, I'm just drawing the lines here, you're coloring them in. Okay, so again, let's do it from uh, the three, four, one. Three, four, 
three, four, one. One more time. Two, three, four, one. That is this part of the lesson. Okay, now we are going to go through and do the entire thing. Again, with me counting the two, three, four, one. And we'll do it four or five times. Okay? And um, depending on the time we have, which strictly is um, to show you a couple of more licks to add to it, um, then you'll have all kinds of fun stuff to work on. Okay, so let's get right to it from the three, four, one, the uh, right from the beginning. Okay, in two, three, four, one. My bad. Here we go. Three, four, one. I'm using a couple different notes. I better pay attention. <laughs> Try to keep playing the chords. Okay, so there you go. There is the actual lesson. Okay, now we're going to learn some alternates or some substitutions, okay? In the same thing, um, they're, they're going to be basically the same notes, but a different way to play them if you want to, just so you learn more of the guitar neck. You saw me um, spacing out just because I'm used to doing this, so I naturally just kind of went off and uh, space as... I was doing that last part and started doing the part that is getting ready to come up now. <laughs> so I was getting ahead of myself, but um, the notes were still the same. Okay, the same thing we did before. The You can also play it this way, starting with your first finger on the third fret of your low E. Now, okay. This just gives you more places to be creative, more ways to be creative using the same notes but in a different location. Okay, instead of now we're going you're going to start looking like a guitar player because we're going to be doing all that. Okay? Or you're going to be doing all that on your own. I'm going to teach you how to um, do what we've been doing, but using these notes instead of 
so many open strings. Okay, everything now is going to be fretted. Okay, so no more open strings is what it comes down to. So the first lick, the the art is going to be exactly the same, but we're instead of doing the open A string, we're going to, the second note is going to be the A here, which is the fifth fret of your low E string. So now we're going to go third fret on your low E. Take pictures of what I'm playing, what fingers I'm using, because um, I'm going to fly through this. Okay, third fret, fifth fret, A string is same as before. Second, third, back to second, and back to fifth on the E. Now back to second, and that's when you're back to your G. Okay, again slowly. Three, five, two, three, two, five. Then back the G chord, but going to the two. Okay, so looking at it from this perspective, two, three, four, one. term here called a hammer-on. It's kind of difficult to get used to. I'm only hitting the pick once. And then you have to be so deadly accurate going to the fifth fret. See, I only pick it once. Okay, this is called a hammer-on and a pull-off here on the second and third fret. I only pick it one time, but I get three notes out of it. So I do the second fret, hammer on my finger, just like it sounds, hammered on. Now a pull off is this. It's actually pulling the finger off. Remember I'm doing nothing down here, I just pick it the first time. See what happens? I pick the string as I pull it off. I don't just take it off. That's not. Uh, otherwise, it would be a takeoff, like a jet airplane. But it's a pull off. So here's your hammer on. Now, when you pull it off, you pick it. Okay. You're not hearing the next string under it because it is shut up because the meat of your finger is laying against it. So when you pull it off, that's the best way to get used to doing it. Those are hammer-ons and pull-offs. That's the best way, seriously. Sit around and do that till your fingers bleed. <laughs> okay, so now you can go. Okay, so watch my right hand down here, okay? Okay, again. See how that works? Okay, so get that in your canogan. Okay, so that is how you substitute the notes. Um, the same thing for the next one. So after you do your G thing and use your hammer on to pull offs, if you want, you have to work into these things. Don't just do it as quick as I did. This whole lesson should take you a good week of working on it every day. And I'm doing it here, you know, in an hour. So this hour should last you a week, okay? If you are um, a person who is enough of a beginner that all this is relatively new to you. So it should take a week of solid practice to get this down, but it's just like riding a bike. Once you learn it, you never have to learn it again, okay? So it's a beautiful thing. Okay, so again, the new way to do it. So the same thing, after that note, we have to go to C. Okay, 
you end up on the A note again. To the C chord. Um, okay, that, that's where it gets weird. How does it? Uh, so up to the D. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's actually the best way to do this C one, up to the D. So first you have the Okay. That's how she would go. I'm sorry for my um, goofiness. Okay, so the next one to the D is gonna be Okay, so same lick. there instead of coming back here so you're doing it on the A string now third fret fifth second third these are hammer-on pull-offs two now third fret now D chord okay Where you get huge time, this is like air time, like Air Jordan jumping through the air. You're way up here on the fretboard, but this is good for you. Okay, and then I will do the open note to get back to the G. Okay, what we're gonna do here, we have slides, all kinds of terms and new things for a lot of you. Okay, we're going to the fifth fret on the A string. Okay, we're going from 5 to 7 to 9 fret numbers. They're, they all have dots. 5, 7, 9. I know mine has two dots. It's a Martin guitar. They put two dots on the 7th fret and on the 12th fret. So don't let that mess with you. And then they don't put one down here. Who knows why? But they're all on the sides. Same as yours. At the 3rd, 5th. They don't show two dots anywhere except for the 12th. So why they do it on the front, I don't know. It makes it kind of a bear to teach this way. Yes, I have other guitars, but I just wanted to play this boy today, so. <laughs> okay, so the fret numbers on the A string are 5, 7, 9. And then, of course, exactly the same, just like before. Same as we were doing. Um, so you do the same thing, 5, 7, 9 on your D, on your A string, then 5, 7, 9 on your D string. So on your A, now your D. just getting used to. Then you can do open G string as you're trying to get back down to here. Because it takes a while. So you hit that string while your hand is moving. Okay, at butterfly speed. Mm. So those are your alternatives. Again, from the beginning, the first one is. Takes a while. With the hammers and the pull offs. Okay, I told you he's going to learn some new things, and that is during this. These are slides. So we're going from five to seven. You can do a hammer-on if you want. 
and then a slide without hitting it again. So you're only hitting one note if you want. It's up to you. Again, no rules. Just stay inside the lines. So after you do the hammer on from five to seven, this is optional, of course. If you have enough sustain, meaning the note is still ringing, you can hurry up and get from five to seven, the note's still ringing, and then slide it really quickly to nine. Don't overshoot it. See, I'm only hitting the, watch my right hand this time. Okay, pretty crazy, huh? But you can get that kind of control. You just have to get control of where to stop and do it a bunch of times. You can drive whoever crazy you by going doing this. Then. But that's the way to practice it. Seriously, is sit in front of the TV and preferably while you're alone so you don't drive anybody nuts. Just to get those nice and good. So again, three, four, beginning one. Fancy time. One more time. Four, one. hammer-ons everywhere. And all this. Okay, so there is your lesson for today. Um, hope that helps out. I know you got to look at my cruddy face for a little bit. Okay, so that is uh, what it is. It's just the basics of learning how to do the riffs, uh, the little bass lines, the licks, whatever you want to call them, but it is rhythm um, mixed in as long as you do mix it in. <laughs> to do this. Mix it in. Do you know that? Yes, you do. It's in there. Trust me. You've played all those notes. You just have to search for them, okay? So now you get to start coloring outside the lines. Okay, after you get what I did first, and like I said, when you get bored, who cares? If you get bored, play something else and work around with it. You have all those notes to work with now and come up with your own thing. Is this a song that I'm playing now? Not that I'm aware of. You know, I made it up just strictly for this lesson. You know, it took me two seconds to put it together. So, if you want to steal the song and write something to it, please do. Um, I will forget it by tomorrow. Honestly. <laughs> I'll forget it in five minutes. Actually, I'll be done with it and I don't have to teach it again. But, tons of you folks will hopefully learn from it. So again, I'm Scott Grove. Uh, check out a lot of lessons I have online. Uh, click the link below. It'll take you to all my free lessons. Some are advanced, some are more beginner things. Um, you can check out all my stuff on my website. There's a link to it. Um, you can grab them on eBay, blah, blah, blah. If you ever want to write me and just ask me how to get them, get them. But there's free stuff. Um, the pay stuff is actually much better than this or whatever. But, you know, I do kind of rush through these things. But as long as you have that pause button there, and you can come back to this anytime since it's free and just pick up where you left off, um, why not? 
you know that's what YouTube's all about so I hope you enjoyed it and like I said it's very basic but it's very necessary um, a lot of people will skip um, lessons like this because they just want to get right ahead to some of the crazy fast stuff and I would just as soon play stuff like this all day long as opposed to anything else it's just more soothing at my age and believe it or not uh, starting at 13 years old the, like I said the Marty Robbins, the Ray Price, the even old Fair and Young and um, of course Cash and Haggard and you know all these guys but that's who I grew up with you know playing all these kinds of music and not only playing that kind of music but playing you know in these people's bands a lot of them um, later on starting at 18 years old I was on the road playing in bands with these people so um, just enjoy the lesson for what it is and start coloring outside the lines about a week from now and use on all those same notes but just experiment you know how to work around the neck now you're getting places that you weren't at yesterday so take advantage of it and then like I said leave the tab books or the music books alone please please because you're just gonna hurt yourself um, not physically by any means because you're gonna hurt yourself um, you're gonna deprive yourself of getting an education on the guitar quicker if you result to books you're gonna remember it more if you figure things out for yourself so these are the tools to get you started figuring everything out on your own and from here on out uh, whatever help you need you know come to some of my free lessons and there's more to help you out for sure you know there's um, a couple hundred hours of lessons that I have for you but the more you figure out on your own the better you're going to be so the sooner you can kick your teacher out the door the better you are okay so thanks for coming checking out the lesson all the new people that are here hopefully to check this out like I said most people are used to me doing much more advanced lessons than these but it's time to um, welcome in the new class and give you guys some stuff that's you know more back at the beginning and that will bring you up to speed with the other um, more advanced stuff that I have out there so be sure to check in now and then I'm going to put out more basic videos like this to help you continue from this point and then get you to where my slightly more advanced stuff is so there's a couple more lessons to do to tie all this together so uh, welcome to the beginning of the ride for some of you and once you look through all the catalog you'll find out that I'm, uh, I'm out there sometimes so uh, stick with me I'll, I'll get you there I swear I will <laughs> if I have a moment from seven years ago and you're watching a video and I'm freaking out yeah there's something wrong with my canogan but I'm getting her fixed so uh, enjoy I do get you I do get you taught though um, thanks for uh, checking in and play well Live long and prosper. Nanu, nanu. <laughs> Bye.